Hey guys, welcome back to Top Speed Golf. I'm Michael Durr, and today we're gonna go over one of the biggest inconsistencies I see on the range, and that is just really trying to play catch up with the face. Okay, that's when that face is really wide open for a long time, and then we try to really square it up very quickly with the hands playing catch up with the hands, and this leads to pretty much any kind of miss hit shot that you can get to. If you're timing up really well, you can crush it, but if you're not on that day, where hooks and pushes, slices, all that stuff, and we're gonna go over the Dustin Johnson drill to show you how to square that club face up earlier and really start getting some good compression so that you can be consistent every time you go out. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, opening up the club face in the downswing is, uh, is gonna be well, the big issue we're gonna tackle here. So if we're going up to the, the top of the, ba um, the backswing and we're coming down into our lag position, you're gonna see right here, I've got this club really open to our, our plane line here. Well, you're gonna see in your best ball strikers, Tiger Woods, Adam Scott, Rory McIlroy, that this club face around when that club's starting to get parallel to the ground is gonna be a little bit more closed. It's gonna be crossing that plane line as they're coming down into the ball. And what they're doing here is they're actually squaring this club up earlier so they can have a more gradual release on the ball in and through contact. And that's how those guys stay so consistent so long. The opposite of that would be, again, keeping that club face really open for a long, long time. And they, at very at the bottom, we're having to flip. So this leads to that early extension that we all hate that leads to chunk balls, thin balls. And like I said, there's pretty much every problem in the book that comes from keeping that face open too early. So the big issue and why it's so tough to close that face down is we, we don't really understand what's actually opening that face up. Now, we all wanna have good lag in our swing. I'm sure we've all heard about having good lag in our downswing and making sure that that's in a good spot and that we're getting lots of it so that we can get it for speed, and that's all true. But I see this more times than not where we're getting lag the improper way. Most of the time, you'll see guys, okay, let's get into a lag position, and they'll do this right here. We see a nice sharp angle between the forearms and the club. Everything looks really nice, but then we're not focusing on the detail that's really killing us here and that is the cupping of the wrist. We're actually extending this wrist. So I see this all the time, especially uh, with uh, you know anybody who's played baseball growing up. Uh, this is a huge thing because in the baseball swing, that's the first move a good hitter is going to hit with is going to be extension of the wrist. Well, for golf, that's a huge killer because you can see when I come down, if I extend the wrist and I get into a lag position, we can see this face open wide up. So what we're going to do is where the, with the Dustin Johnson drill, I'm gonna show you how to do that complete opposite. We all know Dust, Dustin Johnson, when he gets to the top of his swing, he has a ton of flexion in his lead hand. A ton of it, like he's very, very bent. He's got this face very, very close at the top of the swing. And this would be the exact opposite of getting into an extended position with our lead hand and opening up that face. That is the killer right there. That's gonna keep the face open for a long time. And then we're gonna to have to play catch up with the hands. So, to, again, to close that face, we're gonna have to do that opposite. So the Dustin Johnson drill is going to consist of making some practice swings as close to Dustin Johnson as we can with a very, very bowed left wrist. And the reason we're gonna do this is because if we're training the other end of the spectrum, so if you're out there and your club face is wide open and you see some cupping in your wrist as you're coming down into the ball and seeing the face open as a result, then to actually get this into more of a straight, slightly bowed position, which is where we want it to be, we're gonna have to feel a big over-exaggeration. We're gonna have to feel the polar opposite, and that's actually the best way to do it. If, if we're trying to get to a certain point in our golf swing, and say we're over here, uh, and we're trying to get here, if we're trying to inch to this point that we're wanting to get to, it's gonna take a long time to get there. But if we can hit the opposite end of it and really feel the opposite end of the spectrum, it's gonna be a much smoother ride to go from way over exaggerated back to the middle. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do here, I'll show you from down the line first, we're gonna go into the top of our backswing. We're gonna get a very, very bowed wrist where we're getting a lot of flexion in our lead wrist. And as we're coming down, we're gonna let that, the right wrist let us create the lag by getting extended back as well. So both of these wrists, we got flexion, I'm sorry, flexion in the lead wrist, extension, in the, the, the top hand here. And as we're coming down, that's what's gonna give us our lag. Let's go ahead and show you from face on. Okay, we're very, very bowed. We're coming down, we have a lot of bow in our lead wrist and a lot of extension in our back wrist. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to go to the top of your swing, get a lot of bow 
get up at the top of the swing. And what I want you to do as you're coming down, I want you to maintain that position as you're coming down into your swing. We're not going to hit any balls just yet. We're going to go to the top. We're going to hold this. We're going to come down and we're going to maintain that through contact. So as you're coming through contact, especially if you're a guy who's had an open face and you're flipping it a lot, we're going to really feel like we're keeping our hands very square through contact. So if we're coming down here and we were to flip our hands, we're going to close the club face off. And when we try to hit a ball like that, it's just going to go straight left and hook. So what we're going to do is when we're coming down into contact, you're going to really feel like you get a lot of forward shaft lean, kind of like we talk about in the move section in the top speed golf system. We're going to feel like we get a lot of forward shaft lean and really release that out in front. Okay. So what I want you to do, let's go ahead. We're going to go to the top get a lot of bow. We're going to come down, really feel like those hands are coming through nice and square to our target where our palms are kind of facing towards our target. And we're going to make a good hundred slow motion swings, really feeling those positions. And after we do that, we're going to make some swings in our full swing. And we're going to go to the top of the swing, just full speed, you know, just nice, good rhythm with that same feeling. So when you check yourself on camera, you're going to see a huge difference. You're going to almost feel like you're really, really bowed up here, but I guarantee if you guys go out there and try this, you're going to be more into a slightly bowed position and you're going to actually come down. Uh, you know, the club's not going to be real close, but it's going to be much more close than where it started. And now you're going to be able to release the club more out in front with forward shaft lane. So let's go ahead and try one out here. Really going to feel a lot of bow in the top of the swing and lots of forward shaft lane at the bottom. All right, guys, get out there, do the Dustin Johnson drill, and really start getting consistency in your game. All right, guys, hope you all really enjoyed this video, but I got a great bonus for you. If we want to be really good at golf, we want to have tons of speed, have a lot of fun, really start cranking that ball, we got to have a lot of lag and then release that lag to get tons of speed. I've got my number one lag video. I'm going to play a preview of that here in a second. If you want to click the link that pops up in your screen, if you're on a computer, if you're on a tablet, a mobile device, you're going to need to click the I card. You'll get instant access to that full video. Plus, you're going to get five videos from my Top Speed Golf system. Good luck to you guys. Good luck with that lag. Go out there, crush the ball, have some fun. I'll see you in the lag video. Hi, guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard, and in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.